Hey guys, welcome to the Eagle Farm Preview and uh, everybody knows Nick, uh, our mounting yard male guy who uh, will not only tips fantastically from the yard but finds lots of long price winners as well. Like uh, last week was sensational, Nick. Jesus. Yeah, it was good. Um, we don't have those very often but uh, it was yeah. one of those days you, you sort of sit at home and you're watching it and thinking, geez, why does it happen like this every week? But uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, look, we've, we've had a lot of seconds lately. The last month had a lot of seconds, so it was good to see a few of those stick their head out and win. So it was it was a good and, day. And how did you? I mean, I totally understand how you don't go to the meeting because it's it's pretty yeah. crazy up there and a long drive. But how were you going off the telly there? Do you, were you still doing yard from the telly or no? Not really, because we just no. we just don't get the coverage. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it was pretty limited. Um, I was sort of flicking, see what I could find, but but not a whole lot. But the horses I liked and that we and. I shouldn't just say me because it was Sooty and Dodds in the preview that all thought of, we, we were very similar on a lot of horses. I'd seen them parade the, the run before. So I knew what how they'd come up this prep. Chatty Lady was one in particular. I think we all were on at about $17 and started around 12 But it start, first up at Doom and it paraded fantastically well for a Toowoomba horse yeah. coming up. You know, Toowoomba's cold weather, colder weather climate than down here. It looked fantastic, and we've all I've gone, wow, this thing's in for a really good campaign. Um, so you just assume, I guess, from there that it's going to parade well. And you don't need to assume much in that price range, do you? And you no, must exactly. have been, when it was exactly coming what... down the outside there, mate, were you all were you getting excited or what prices well, did you take it? Nick? Just I took $16 it. Um, yeah. then we had military gambler in the cup, was around $14. Uh, we had Adelaide won the guineas. I think that started at eight dollars. Mm. Um, I actually tortured okay, myself. Okay, oh, hold on a second. You, you can start paying me now. Okay. <laughs> I, I actually tortured myself and <laughs> actually tortured myself and did the sums on a multi the day after. Went oh, <laughs> <laughs> missed opportunity. Oh, yes. oh, that that sounds like win and wins to me. Yeah, um, no, look, it was it was a great day and um, the track played. You know, it's just a good day for local trainers and horses. It's a, it's a tricky yeah. track. So. Yeah. But the one disappointment on the day was Yellow Brick. So Yeah, it was. It was cost, cost, me, cost me a lot of money. I thank God oh. it was so short late, so I couldn't keep on going. But I was no, already just... I was already in a pretty big position there, Nick. And, and you know what? Was the overs right. God wasn't very kind to me, shall we? No, so. no. no. Uh, but, oh, it was disappointing. There's no other way to look at it. Yeah. And uh, Josh, uh, every all the Rainers know you, of course, but um, just out there because this goes out uh, to uh, to a lot more people than just our, our members. Um, you know, uh, what's what's your story, mate? Other than being a professional golfer, now professional punter, <laughs> I bumped into you at the Betfair VIP um, debate the other night, and you were straight off to the casino afterwards. So you're a man of my heart. Yeah. But for those new people to you. Uh, Give us a give us a little bit of a spiel about yourself. Yeah, it's um so I became a trainee golfer, played um, played on tour for a bit, but unfortunately I wasn't nowhere near good enough. I realised that early, and then uh, just from the golf club, a lot of people were involved in racing, obviously, and um, none of my family were involved in racing, so I picked it up during then, and obviously became a member of the rant because I love my Sydney racing, and um, you, Mark, and Glenn just taught me the ways probably to win. And now I focus mostly in the bush and provincial, and obviously do Metro Sydney. Oh, now where the well. where the juice is, hey, where all the mistakes are. I love yeah. it. I love it. So, um, um, but you're all you also do like the whole of the eastern coast now, of course. That's why we got you on on this Brisbane program. And there's a bit of a there's a bit of um, carryover, isn't there, with Sydney? Yeah, no, that's what Melbourne. I like to yeah. see sometimes. When obviously I really look at Melbourne, to be honest with you. Uh, but obviously, when a Sydney horse goes down there, it's you know, I have to do the race, and most of the time. They do perform. And it's the same in Brisbane. So um, we'll see how we go. Pity, guys. Well, let's get stuck into it. Um, yeah, Eagle Farm, four-metre rail position. Uh, Nick, do you have a feel here? Uh, Gord, it is absolutely pissing down here in Brisbane and has done for the last... Oh, shit. So I've done it all wrong. I've done this on a good track, Nick. So... It'll be a good track. Doom... Well, Eagle Farm yeah. will dry out, but it won't be... It, it, they'll get a toe in, I reckon. I think it's it, it'll be perfect. It's it's we've had a, rain, a line of storms has gone through, and I had a look just about twenty minutes ago near the airport. They've had at least an inch of rain. That's right across the road from Eagle Farm, so they'll certainly 
I think it actually is really good because I was worried this track was going to get really firm because it's just been so dry up here. Um, but uh, as Eagle Farm has been lately, I'll treat it as fair until I see otherwise. Beautiful. And uh, Josh? I, every time I normally play Eagle Farm, I normally play fair. Uh, yeah. and I, I think it's it's if you're the best horse, you can definitely get your chance, um, which is hard to find on this meeting if you're the best horse in, in some races. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's considerably true because there's not an absolute necessity to stay to the inside e easily. So there is spread. There are gaps. There's well, not a lot of unlucky hard runners. Fence, yeah. Hard fence is probably not the place to be very often. Yeah. Um, two or three offs probably better. So yeah. yeah, but I mean, that also gives chances that are back on the rail. Yeah, They've always got there. options, you know what I mean? Because they can save ground on the inside even though it's not the best and still get the job done. So we're just saying Absolutely. super fair then, find the best horses. Absolutely. Yep, agree 100%. Uh, race one, uh, 2,200. Gee, you have some funny distances up there, Nick. <laughs> 2,218 <laughs> metres in uh, race one. And uh, I'll go to you first, Nick. Well, this is the... They should call race one in Brisbane the Sooty Stakes because he's just he just nails it week in, week out. We he does. He I think does. he's lying on the beach in Hawaii at the moment. So Yeah, good pina coladas. Yes. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Good luck to the great man. And it's it's quite fitting that the first race is a twenty two hundred that we're probably not going to have a whole lot of interest in. I think the first two races are a bit of a, a shit show, to be honest. But look, it is one that I've tried to stay away from these races if we've talked about Gore, but I've sort of got a little bit of interest in this one that I don't think there's a lot of chances, and I think There'll be a reasonable tempo here. There's a few that'll go forward. Um, and I I liked one out of the parade last start that I thought is obviously coming up, come up well. Um, I like to find these Waller runners that I think are coming on really well in their yeah. preparation. Um, and I think Mighty Willie's probably the one for me here. I think if he parades well, I think he's going to get a nice run. I've sort of got him... There's only two positions he can be in, isn't there? And that's behind lead or one back further on the fence. It's, yeah. It's, it's the only two positions. Yeah, so he's, he's going to get a nice soft run. I think there's there's a bit of tempo here. Um, and the other one was without revenge, the Van Dyke runner. I mean, he's one of our better trainers up here and I didn't see a lot of chances away from that. So there could be an opportunity to play both of those. We'll see off the parade. I'm not going to obviously get carried away. It's 2,200 in yeah. Brisbane, but... Geez, the Waller, Waller wins a lot of these races up here. They're, they're, they're not good enough for down there, but they win up here. And this horse paraded well last time, so I expect him to look tip-top on um, tomorrow. Beauty. Josh? Oh, firstly, I've got to say, obviously, you've got me off the bench here. Um, obviously, I'm no sooty because he's a freak of these um, <laughs> these preview shows, um, especially like like you guys said, race one. Um, I, think it's way, just, um, I think it's just variance, Josh. <laughs> you, need more, you need more data, mate. You need more data. Well, um, his bloody weights and measures. It's like he's doing. Form oh, he gets from, it so he, right. It's like he's doing form from the nineteen eighties. <laughs> it doesn't matter how you do it, as long as they win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the, that's exactly. the whole point of it. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, yeah. I think Eagle Farm is only a seven race meeting because I buy the first two races because yeah. it was going to take me a long time to do. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I've given the old shoulders an arm. Uh, Marnus Levershane, no run there. Uh, yeah, um, I'm in a similar boat, but the horse I did go looking for was Mighty Willie. Um, I'm just not sure whether I want to take five to two when you are still going to need the gaps now. I did mention they tend to get off the fence, so I'll probably get a run, so it's less significant, but it's the only bet I could entertain there. Mm -hmm. And um, race two, uh, Nick, I hope you've watched... It's a thousand meters for the two-year-olds, and you would have need to have watched about a thousand trials here, mate. Um, yeah, and nine hundred and eighty-nine of those trials would have been a complete waste of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. just, I, I reckon this will be the lowest turnover race of the weekend in any state. It's just, I, I, and that's stupid because I haven't looked at Adelaide or some of the others. But I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah. how can you bet in this? Oh, it's a minefield. It is a mine, unless something parades and just looks a million dollars. Um, and we'll, we'll certainly have a look at them good uh, and see what we think. But Well, I mean, that's the whole point, mate. There, there yeah. could be an edge here because there's not an edge off form, obviously. Yeah. And even off massive trial watches, it's a bit tricky about how you handle it in that circumstance as well. So, Look, uh, a lot of these Mashanis are really averagely bred horses. It's just, it's just their business model. They buy them turn them through, try and get the, the cutest bonus money early and then get rid of them. So yeah. 
Yeah. They're trying to win. So any Mashani in these early races, you've really got to give them an extra tick. But yeah, no, there's, there's better races to bet in, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I mean, saying that, I, I'm I, I'm going to bet because I'm just going to handle it from this sort of like narrative slash form perspective. And that is um, best trailer was number four, uh, Zelezny, um, off times and dom- dominance. Uh, saying that, I, I just thought I was really happy to go against the Mashanis. Now, for me, and you'll notice in my next couple of tips as well. I'm expecting a spike from the Annabelle Nation uh, stable. Uh, she sort of yeah. dropped off a little bit there for a while, as all or the ranters know the reason why, but people watching this don't, well, they don't have access to it, so they don't need to know about it. Well, they do need, to, they should need to know about it. But uh, anyway, she's about to spike. Uh, she's turned yeah. it round. She is one of the best trainers in Australia, and she gets some of the best cattle. Mm. So I had to err towards her two horses that she's running here, just from a value perspective. Um, so that is um, Metcalf, number two, um, who didn't trial as well as the four Les- Zelezny, but she can leave something up her sleeve um, going uh, to race day, which could be interesting about taking $8.50 to find out. And the other one uh, down the bottom here is, is, well, she's got three as well. But uh, the other one of interest to me was, um, I doubt it, number 14. I think it's a bit of a lead that she um, um, that she ran it in that absolute A-grade trial day at Kensington. That's where all the best early two-year-olds trial. It wasn't disgraced on that occasion. Um, looked to have some early professional speed. I thought the booking of Orman was particularly interesting. Now, was it an A-grade trial? No, it wasn't. But um, interesting what the track conditions will be, guys, because this is out of I Am Invincible, so the drier the better, mm. is suggest from this, um, this line. It's amazing the stats with I Am Invincible as far as being on top of the ground rather than being on a wet track. So, uh, yeah, no, I was uh, particularly interested in those three horses um because i just decided the easiest way to do it was to throw all the mashanis in the bin you know what i mean oh, and see, oh, see, look, you know there's, there's nothing wrong with that theory either to because be it's, it's not mashanis up in like you know um mid to north queensland this no, is mashanis at eagle farm like um, that's a big difference and uh and nisham gets better cattle than um than ross does so uh, I thought there was a way to sort of a little bit of a betting angle there. Uh, 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 a, what can I say? Like a like a, a low confidence betting angle. But just just, just one thing. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah. The four... Oh no! I was just going to say there's one more thing that um, more frustrating than this race is obviously Josh Fleming. He's going to have to call all these in the run, isn't he? Oh, I don't know. He don't, I don't know. Oh, what a machine! Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, just on. Zelensky. Well, let's see how he goes. He might fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't blame him if he does. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Nick? Just on the fours, the Lesney. Um, just be really wary of that uh, stable with their trials. As um, in they show everything or they hide it? They trial like Tarzan and run like Jane. Okay, well, that's great information. Well, then yeah. you've made the decision very easy for me, and that is I'll just back the two Nisham horses that I suggested there. Yep. Um, I'll leave that one alone, but I'll wait for you. I'll wait for your yard, Nick, too. You know sure. I mean? Look, I'd imagine if there's an item invincible in this field, it's going to look better than most of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably going to be the standard. Uh, yeah, the, the the jockey booking is interesting too, as well, isn't it? With Allman going on there. Yeah, it is very yeah. absolutely good call. Yeah, uh, race three, twelve hundred meters. Josh, what have you got? Yeah, at least I can start the show now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry for the first ten minutes. But um, this uh, this race was quite interesting. Four of them come out of the same race um, over that 1,000 metres of doom and over the 1050. Um, I found one horse, and the stable is obviously flying, Matt Dunn. And I actually like the two jockeys that are on it, um, Ash Morgan and Malian. Um, I've actually gone with Oceans of Energy here. Um, it's the only horse that's actually won over 1,200. Um, obviously, well, that was first up uh, when it came fourth over the 1,000 metres at Eagle Farm four weeks ago. Um, it was better through the line. It's linked with Instagood, who's obviously won from that race, but I thought it was better through the line than Instagood in that uh, race. And like I said, 
um, with the price to find out. It's going to settle probably last or second last. But inside Barry, I'm hoping he gets the gaps. And I think it's maybe $8 around to throw at the stumps. Yeah, it'll, it'll be back, but it'll do absolutely nothing. Uh, but it'll need sort of a little bit of luck, won't it? So, um, uh, okay, yeah, sweet. Uh, Nick, what have you got? Yeah, that's interesting that you said that, Josh. It's probably the one I found in the race too. Uh, I think, there's, you know, there's plenty of tempo up front here and it, it's just gonna, <clears throat> a few of these I worry about going up to 1,200 for the first time. And I'll be honest with everyone here, I haven't had much luck with these three-year-old races the last couple of months. I've, I've got them wrong time in, time out. But this time they've got, they're going from the 1,000 up to the 1,200. So I think it's a little bit of a different thing. Look, show me show me mercy, you know, you go last start, you know, starting price, I think it was odds on or even money. So, and it, it's, it just didn't sprint with them. It looked like it needed the 1200. It's got to be a chance. And Oceans of Energy looked like it was a reasonable two-year-old. Uh, it's a big, big leggy sort of type. And I thought it would, would come back as a better three-year-old. It actually paraded pretty well. So I think Eagle Farm suits. Uh, I think the 1200 really suits. It'll be good speed here. Now the one, that's uh, I think our favourite now is the three action king. Now it's the one that uh, won at Doombin and ran super time. Um, off the time it just wins. But that was a day where it was like they were running downhill. Um, they all just ran really good time. But it did a good job. Uh, it's a look. There's a lot of chances here. Um, I, in an eight eight horse field, I found six genuine hopes. So it's not a race I'm going to really toe into. But um, oceans of energy, if I can get. Nine ten dollars. I'll, I'll, I'm quite happy to have a little spec there. Yeah, it's an interesting race because I mean it comes out of the obvious lead up, and um, it's interesting what you guys suggest. Off that run, it's got more ability than the others, and it's probably the one off that run that uh, is more suited going up in distance as well. And you're getting double figure odds to find out. Yep. It's a horse of interest to me, but clearly not on top. Number top is number eight, Adriel. Wonder who it's ah. trained by. Eh? Yeah, Annabelle Nation. There you go. Look, you've got two great runs up in Queensland before it running in a Group 2 race and only getting done by 1.2 lengths. Uh, that's just superior than anything in this race has done. I'm expecting the tab stable to spike beautifully. I get it trialling over 1,000 metres, which I love the longer distance trial. It was a dominant winner on that occasion. Um, I think it's the one that could be going on to better stuff. Um, so I am eight from seven. So uh, we're and and I definitely will be betting. Although the others, you know, you can't get rid of them. It's not like you can pen them. They just don't seem like bets to me. Hey, just a question: um, Good tongue tie on the eight. Like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So I, I notice show me mercy. The twos put blinkers on, which sort of half into me as well. Yeah, see, be. now I haven't actually. Normally, I zoom in on the trial to see if it's wearing the tongue tie or not in the trial. Yep. I actually I haven't done that yet, but I will do that afterwards. So my thing is, I'd suggest it probably did wear it in that Sunshine Coast trial, and it was yep. a dominant winner over the thousand meters. So I'd suggest um, it's it it could be a positive, not a negative at yeah, the sure. moment. But I haven't done the close up of it yet. So. Um, no, good Okay, sweet. So, um, oh, a couple of well, uh, well. To be honest, uh, my on top selection, Josh, is a four dollar twenty chance. So that's a roughie for me. Yeah, and uh, you guys have found a genuine uh, outside the market chance in an eleven dollar shot, and I like it as well. I'm happy to play both those numbers. Both quite, of quite, com quite comfy to sort of bet there, but I mean, I, I think yet again these early races, Nick, they're just so your cup of tea, man. Like, um, yeah, they're yard races for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to uh, race four over 1500 meters and um, uh, Josh I'll go to you first yeah this one's an interesting little race here uh, admission of love is um, it was first up after 35 weeks I think and there was a pretty stylish win at the Sunshine Coast it kicked away from it quite well but I, I just can't get over my head Barry 15 Taylor Marshall um, he's not one yeah. of mine it's obviously going to go back from that draw. Yeah, it could win, but um, I'm going against it. So I'm going for the – I've done the Gordo thing here. Didn't get past number two. So I've got two horse blades, number one, Regal Pom, unfortunately. It's go, I'm going back with the normal way I part is a leader back in grey from a class six. 
Um, we've got obviously Bailey Wheeler is obviously a jockey you want to look for with claiming three. He's still one of the best up there with that claim. Um, obviously, Maps in the top four here. I don't know if it's going to lead, but um, it should be up there. And from memory, when we and Mr. Hilton did a preview show with you on a Wednesday, I'm pretty Harris. sure he had a slot. Yeah. Um, he had a yeah. slight opinion of this horse before it went up there. So I, I'm expecting, and you're expecting Nisham to come out. So I'm expecting something to happen tomorrow. Um, $7 looks an easy bet. Um, and the other one I found is um, Aton of Delight. Um, first up, it came, made good ground at Doobin. Uh, sorry, was it Doobin? Yeah, at Doobin over the 1350, which is short of its prime, prime distance in the no metro win race. Um, loves this kind of distance range. And last prep, it came third behind Stuttering and Alberg, which I don't mind that form. Um, should settle a lot closer from the low barrier, and you're getting $14 to find out there. So I think it's going to run a decent race. Um, also, a little mention to Cool Encounter that obviously comes out of that same race. It did its little sneaky thing on uh, at the last 50 metres there. I don't know where it's going to go from. I think it's a wide barrier. It's obviously going to go back. It's, I think it's $26. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, they yeah. actually scratched from the next race to come in this race with a wider barrier. So that is quite interesting, but I'm not declaring it as a bet, but it's something to probably look out for. Well, I mean, it's it's really easy, isn't it? And if you want to, I mean, you're not taking up much percentage there, mate. You're mm. taking up 15, 20. You're, ta you're taking up le less than 25% of the market with your three selections. So I yeah. suggest you should be hedging on it, mate. But <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway um, Nick, what have you found here? Yeah, keen here, good. Um, had a decent bet, number 16, Mission of Love. The price has been knocked off now. Uh, I think they threw up $7 or something like that, which was a bit silly, I think. Uh, uh, I know a bit about this horse. It's I think it's a pretty talented filly. She's had hoof issues her entire life, uh, and they finally got them sorted. Uh, and I thought it was Wow, pretty, that's good info, man. That's good info. I thought it was a pretty stylish yeah. win at Caloundra, Sunshine Coast. Uh, trial slash jump out in the week and flew on Tuesday. Uh the fact that it's raining here now and it's going to take the fire out of the track, I think will really help. Um, I think there's good speed here. There's quite a few horses here that are going to go forward. Um, as Josh said there, I think like Regal Pom's going to go forward. I think Dark Harmony will go forward. I think there's quite a few that are going to go forward here. And I think it'll be genuinely run. Um, I'm a bit with you, I'm a bit with you guys on the jockey. It's not one that it's sort of you know, give an automatic tick to, but I think it's pretty simple. I, th I think it's rather, I'd rather it draw there than drawn three or four because then he's got to find his way through them. This way, it's just easy. Just sit out the back, um, good tem good tempo, and then just, it's pretty simple. Just come to the middle of the track and and make your run from there. It's a little bit similar to what she did on the sunny coast. She, she just takes a little bit of time to wind up. But yeah, I, I've had a decent each way bet here at the price. Um, but I will probably look to save on the day on probably either... Regal Pom, the one or five Dark Harmony are going to be the on tempo runners with a bit of form. And obviously, when, when you're out the back, it's a bit of a, a low percentage play. Um, and you want to have someone up up front. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. Where, where is Jalen Lloyd, if I can ask? Is he suspended? No. <laughs> this is, is one of the great mysteries. And this is one of the great mysteries with this stable as well. Jaden Lloyd has gone to Sydney to ride Knight's nice Choice. Oh, of course. I was, I was going to yeah. say, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Seriously good horse. Yeah, bloody oath. I, uh, I, I remember better. when Helio won on it um, at, at Sunshine Coast and it's made, and I can't believe he stayed on unless he got kicked off. Oh, yeah. Know. And they turned down serious money for this horse. I, I'm thinking $3 million for Knight's Choice, like serious, serious money, and it's gone to Sydney. Um, look, and if I'm taking a horse into state, I'm putting a good jockey on from where they where they're based. Yeah, on. yeah it's got. It's, I think it's got barrier one too. So yeah, we saw it with Jim, James Orman and with Antino last week or two weeks ago. Um, just got destroyed in Melbourne. They just yeah, I know, but you but I mean, we won't be taking the short price about this horse, Nick. So you, no, you true, know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. side draw is more significant if you've got to take odds on. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Antino does win that race more than one out of two times. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, yeah. of course it does. Yeah. Just, by the way, what are they people saying it's got the perfect run? It's stuck behind the leader in a slow tempo. It's not the perfect spot. <laughs> oh, I hate run. it. I hate and, it. And um, the only thing with... Well, uh, mainstream is, media call it the perfect run and we call right. it the coffin, don't yeah. we? So, yeah, yeah. Especially Flemington. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially Flemington. But mission it's this, not like Wellington. Yeah. The only thing about one mission of love is it's it's gone fifteen hundred second up, which is a little bit of a concern. Fourteen hundred would have been ideal, but uh, this stable do do a few funny things. But um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm keen it. Yeah, well, I don't want to lose on it because I love lightly race horses that might be going on to better stuff, but I was just a lot more comfortable about backing number one, Regal Palm, you know, um, just from a map perspective. Yep. Yet again, I know there's one or two positions that leads or it's his behind leg. So I know exactly where it's going to be. Um, you think it's a I, one batter good? Is it a bit one Yeah, pain? Yeah, I think yeah. it is, which means being locked yeah, up on the inside is no good because it doesn't really have a lot of ping. True. It, it's just found the absolute right race. Uh, saying that, I haven't marked a favourite. I've marked Nick Shaw's favourite, Mission of Love. But mm-hmm. when I've got the double question mark of map and jockey, um, it's hard to get too involved in super short stuff. Yeah. Um, but thanks look, to the guy that put up, thanks to the blokes that put up $7. Well, because... that's easy in that circumstance. You yeah. don't worry about map and jockey in that, on best horse in, in that price sure. range. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, so for me, I am backing. Um, I'm going to back both of them, and mm-hmm. I'm really happy about the bracket as well. So, yep. by the way, there's been no mention of, from either of you of the last start winner, the first emergency number seventeen, Sunset Soiree, who's um, the I'm second favourite. What's the story there, Nick? What's it with it? Oh, look, it's got a chance. Good. I mean, it's going well. It's the best trainer, best jockey up here. Uh, it's Drawn a shitty gate. It's going to be, I think, mean, is the widest gate. So it's going to be, just where do they get to? What, I don't want. It? I don't want to back it. I'm just like it's, no, it's interesting. Not that neither of you have mentioned the second favourite. That's all. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's got a hope, but yeah, I'd want a bit better odds than what I can currently get. Yeah. Well, if they, if I'm going to back a buck mark, I'd rather ten times Mission of Love over that horse. Yeah, how I saw yeah, it. exactly. That's how I yeah, saw it. Yeah, it's, it's got yeah, a better dynamic spread over it. That's how I yeah. saw it straight away. Hundred yeah. yeah. percent agree with that. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to uh, race five over the 1,400 metres. And um, oh, no, I'll go to you first, Nick. You should know all these horses really well. So. Yeah, I do know these horses really well, Gordon. And I look, there's going to be a heap of people that jump into Naval Trader here, I'm sure, around the 3.30 sort of mark. But he's just not the horse I think they thought he was. Um, I thought he had every chance last time and he couldn't run around, down. It was Dark Harmony. At every chance to run it down, and I just can't come into him with that price. I think he's he's massive unders. Uh, he's a really nice style of horse, a nice grey. Um, parades well off the parade. You'll go, yeah, he's going to be one of the top two in the yard. But <clears throat> I just think he's a he's just a horse. And Nick, uh, yeah, question off notice there. How do you find looking at greys in the yard? Glenn says that he gets less of a lead on the greys than he does on the other ones. They're a little bit more. They're a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Mm. But um, every now and then you do get a grey comes in and you go, wow. Um, yeah. If you get a grey that's, I shouldn't say dappled up, but if you get a grey that comes in with a really good coat, um, they do really stand out. And as they get older, it gets a little bit more difficult when they get whiter. Um, it's a, a lot of these horses when they're younger and grey, they're, they're you know they get from a dark grey and slowly yeah, yeah. like we all do. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, well, you know what, redheads, me, we actually don't go grey, we go white. Yeah, I know. A good that amazing. One, wow. one of the great soccer players, Rod Brown. It, it, oh yeah. yeah. When I play with Roddy, he had orange hair. Now he's got brown hair. What, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He went to the chemist. <laughs> but yeah, no, I I can't. So I, sorry. To <laughs> no, no, you've got him. Yeah. You've got him. <laughs> I I can't come in the naval trader at the price. Look, it can win, but um, I don't think it's. It got a bit of a spree course this one, and I, I just don't think it's as good as what they thought it was. Um, I'm happy to play the one below at Dramatica. Um, yeah. it's going to be a reasonable price. I its first two runs is prep. It just had no luck. Um, and I didn't mind it run, it's run at all last time. Uh, it's going to get a soft run here. Um, it's going to need luck, obviously, because it's going to be in luck. shit spill as far as traffic is concerned. But God, it came home in some nice stuff. Yeah. Uh, this Look, preparation. So. I wouldn't be keen yeah. if it was over the road at Demon, but at Eagle Farm, they have been spreading lately and they're getting a run. Yeah. Uh, so I'm quite keen to play here around the $10, $11 mark. Um, I had a bet about an hour ago on it. Um, and it's it's been parading well this horse, and you can see it's uh, 
in, it's in good health. So happy to pay here, and, and I think it's much better value than the favourite, and it's got a pretty long tail in it, this race. Definitely. Josh, what do you got? Yeah, I think this is more like a Knicks race. Um, I'm going with Naval Trader as one of those last chance goes. Yep. Um, like, I think you guys went off one too early with the love. It's like sort of uh, love and melody when that. Um, yes. This is, yes. This is, yeah. This is, yeah. No, I, no, I thought this it was the a moral chance. the previous. Uh, Correct. Don't, yeah. don't mention that. At all. I'm, I'm sorry. The yeah. poison to yeah. This probably yeah. Uh, film, but um, I, I watching that replay. I don't think Penn Thompson knew what he was sort of doing. He didn't know where he wanted to go. He jumped out well, um, rid it up, and then he was just. Where do I go? Where do I do? Do I? And then magically he found a spot, but I thought he did too much work, and then he couldn't catch Dark Army. He led the whole way that time. Um, I think this is the last chance you can back it. Like you said, uh, Nick knows all these horses better than I do. I must admit. So um, take it with uh, query, but um, I think tomorrow could be its day where it wins. But. I don't know if it's going to keep. You don't feel happy this. about it. You got that. No, that's exactly right. Like, um, there's two the horses. Same, yeah, there's yeah, two yeah. horses also. Like I, I've been following Bon Cassie um, a lot. Obviously, it's come from like the Grafton area. I liked it when it came out first up, and then it won that sprint race. I can't remember where it was. It was dynamic, and mm-hmm. it's been settling up there ever since. It's fourteen hundred. I think suits better. It's obviously a big price. Um, wide barrier though. So, but and also there's a sneaky one. The catch. He used to be Beyond Baker's horse. I didn't mind its trial um, up, up there as well. It's It's been, I think, how long has it been? 61 weeks on this last run from Rose Hill. Um, obviously, from Baker to Bruce. And we know we all know how Jack Bruce goes. Um, $27 inside barrier. I don't think tomorrow it's its day, but it's a, it's a chance if it, it turns up. Yeah, it's really interesting. I... I, I um... I'll definitely be having something on the number 18 uh, Dramatica, but I've got serious questions about the map. But yet again, it's in that double figures price range where I'm at least going to make something on it. I'm starting to think, I'm starting to go with you, Nick. And uh, you scared me there, Joss, because I was like, because I had an opinion of this naval trader and it should have, if it was as good as we thought it was going to be, it should be winning this race. Um, But then you look at its lines. Its lines really aren't that good, are they? This preparation, I think it's overrated. Good, I really do. I I just think it had a little bit of a undeserved sort of rap on it early, and uh, it's just. I think it's found its level, and I don't think its levels anything Mm. special. Well, not at three thirty. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're blue, I could entertain having something on it, Josh. Um, Yeah, I don't think. I I think it is going to blow because there's a lot of people that think in the same sort of thing. It depends how like Dark Army and that guy on the previous race too. Um, there's of that of that link form. Okay, link form. Yeah, it's nice. So uh, that's in race. What was it? Race three or race four? I can't remember. But there's link form there with a few of the other horses there. Okay, well, there's a super easy bet in this race, guys. Um, it's it's a good little roughing. It's uh, number two, the catch. Going to do absolutely nothing from three. If you have a look at last preparation when Baker took it over, so it went from Costa. Went from Costa being dominant winner three times in a row up in in Queensland, okay? Yep. Goes down to Baker. Baker resumes it over 1,800 metres. Um, it just looks weird to me, man. I, I love the fact that it's got that nice trial and it's resuming over 14 and, and not the 18. And it look, to be honest, I, what more positive do I need to say? The horse is... Well, I think best available right now is twenty seven dollars. Like, yeah. what a super easy bet! Some of the stuff it was doing in the in the Sydney Metropolitan there is good enough to be competitive, even though it was getting gapped as well. And if you notice, all three of those last runs were on tracks that are going to significantly work worse condition than what we're going to get at Eagle Farm as well. And maybe um, it's out of Medaglia Doro, which is normally more of a wet sire. Um, but I mean, those two. Those dominant wins at Ipswich and Doombin were on what I think is probably the conditions we're going to see on Saturday. Anyway, I'm, I'm talking far too long about a horse that's $27. Uh, there's three horses of interest to me. In order, I am 17 from 18 from two. But at the moment, the two I'll be making a profit on is two and 18. Um, let's move on to uh, race six over 1,820 metres because Eagle Farm don't like to 
round off with too many zeros at the end. Um, <laughs> I can piss with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what have you got? Oh, no, there's many chances in this good. Uh, I haven't had a bet yet, but I I can see myself having a bet on the day. Um, I'm with the two Golan runners here, the three and the six. Kokonotsu and Tenzing. I mean, I've probably got Tenzing on top. I thought his effort last time was really good. Uh, got no luck, got shuffled out, sat out wide. Nick, that's a big call because, I mean, at the moment, the market is the other way around. So, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah look, I, look. I think there might be – what have I got here? I'm just going to look at my, my – yeah, I think there'll be a little bit of pressure here. I don't sh- know it'll be that easy up front. And I thought Tenzing did a really good job last time. Uh, he loomed up to win. I think if he got a softer run, I think he wins. He looms up to win at about the 200, 250 because he had a tough run and he got flushed out down the back straight and then he was wide. Totally, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a tough run. The only problem is it might happen to him again here. Um and it's interesting what Josh said before about Ben Thompson. He just won't make a bloody decision lately. Um, so what's the story there? Because you're Angela Jones off for Thompson on. Now, that's got to be at least a positive lead from the stable, or is it or not? Because they well, do like Angela Jones. So Yeah, but um, you would normally think yes. But, I mean, I, with Ben Thompson, I'm going back to he rode yellow brick in the carnival when it, it was really short and needed to win to get in the Stradbroke. Remember, it... it yeah. There was a big debate over the ride. Whether night. it was a murder or not. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it's half fucked him. He just won't make a decision now. Um, he's just very passive on things. And that, to me, as a punter, the, the worst thing you can be as a jockey is passive. Just if you're wide, go forward or go back. Just don't sit out there. Just do one That's, of these. Yeah. I don't care if you make a mistake. Just make a decision. decision. Exactly. You know? It's just yeah. like Nick when we're playing football. If you're not losing the ball every once in a while, then you're really not doing anything, are you? Exactly. You, you know what I mean? You're not having a crack. You got to have a no, crack. No, exactly. No. So to do, just do something. You know, it's almost like, and he's just very I'm like Rob Brown, who just played. You know, just just, just normal all the time. Genius, genius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good hair. Um, but. Yeah, just make a decision. And that's the worry with Ben now that he just doesn't seem to be doing that. And that's a bit of a concern with this horse. But I think the horse is going well. Um, and the other one I've got a little bit of, uh, I'll be probably making sure I don't lose on it, is the four ancient Egypt. Uh, I was on it last time and it was pretty disappointing, but it runs prior to that were okay. Um, fantastic trainer. Uh, one of our better ones up here. Um and jocks all right. So not a race I'll get too involved in, though, I wouldn't think. Josh, do you have some clarity? Well, actually, I, with Nick's um, info, I'm actually more keen. Like, 18.35 is not really my distance. I don't know if that's anyone's distance range, to be fair. <laughs> um, I'm with Tenzing here. But definitely with Tenzing over the favourite, Kenotsu. Um, I don't, like, like Nick said, I don't think it's going to get control. Or if it does get control, it's going to get worked up there. And, it like, let's be honest, it beat Esky. Last start, and that couldn't even win. I think it was at Ipswich during the week. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I don't think that. I know the second horse has come out and won and beat. Um. I think you guys are backing in the first Mighty Willie in that. Mm. Um. But we all know what Esky is. Like he couldn't even go in Sydney. Now can't half go in Brisbane. So I'm and Tenzing, like I said, it was a wide run last start. It was a decent rise in distance, thirteen fifty up to a mile wide. Um. Like I said, if it found cover, I think it wins that race. And last prep over the mile, the last run before um, finishing that prep, it rattled the line from the back. I just think, and I know we're not we're bagging Ben Thompson a bit, but he did win on all that Pizarro and beat Yellow Brick that he used yeah, to be on yeah, last yeah. week. So I didn't watch the races on Wednesday, so I didn't know how he performed. That'd but give that him could, some confidence back. That's yeah. that's correct. That could, and that's a big fu too, isn't it? Cool. Yep. to getting rid of him. So oh, that was the um, ultimate you trust so me on the horse because yeah. yeah. So he I like I said, I didn't watch the races on Wednesday. I didn't know how he performed on Wednesday, but that could be a massive turnaround on winning on a horse like that, beating an old horse that he got sacked from. Yeah. So Tenzing here is the bet for me, definitely. It's at four dollars twenty. I think it's gonna set all the back, come around the outside and hopefully be too good. It looks it, we've got the best trainer up there, so yeah. it looks obvious to me. 
Uh, for me, I'm backing two horses in the race. The one I'm going to have the best result on is number 11, Sate Chicken. Uh, this is absolute grand final for this horse. I love the progression. 12, 14, 16, 15, now 18, 20. Um, it's a proven winner um, uh, and it's ready to peak here and it does nothing from four. Uh, it's going to be really tidy and I've got this as a significant jockey upgrade with uh, Graham off for um, Morgan on. So I thought that was a really easy bet. Number 11. And the other one I was going to have something on 10 was number six, uh, Tenzing, which is uh, the horse of consen consensus on this occasion. Just interestingly, I, I think the market is reacting to the booking of the jockey here because, I mean, Allman has ridden Tenzing a couple of times this preparation and he has um, obviously been connected to... Um, Kokonotsu as well. Now, I tend to think that that's less of a lead from the stable because he won on uh, Kokonotsu last start. You know how they tend to just leave jockeys that have won on horses yeah. on them? And it's not Orman saying, I think that Tenzing or Kokonotsu is a better horse. It's just like an auto thing they normally do. Yeah, the, um, this stable tells them where they ride to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The woman doesn't say, I want to ride this. It's yeah, but I mean, you know, like Waller tells J-Mac where, where, where he's going to ride. But I mean, it, it, there, it, there are certain circumstances where you can yeah. just say, when you're a champion, you can say, fuck you. Tell uh, us a bit about A. Morgan on Satay Chicken, the jock. Good. I like A. Morgan as a jockey. Yeah, yeah. I love him. Yeah. I love yeah. him. Um, he's really good. And like uh, like from barrier for no work, he's one of those sort of um, English okay. European riders that is just super balanced, you know what I mean? So he'll just do nothing. And yeah. then, you know, he's pretty strong late as well. So Did he have a bit South of time African? Anyway, it doesn't matter. What's is that? He, is he, is he South African? African? No, no, no. He, he's British. He's like, oh, he, he's from Great no, Britain. Okay. Yeah. Did he have like a spell out though? He didn't have a lot of rides for a while did he get injured or am I thinking of he else? moved he moved up to brisbane for a while and then i think he just come back to the newcastle area and then he just okay. obviously coming up for the cody morgan horse and good relationship with there so yeah um he rides a lot in this country in new south wales and that grafton yeah, area he, and he really rides well a lot of winners it. rides a lot of winners okay yeah. so he's not he's certainly not a negative then oh no no, no i'm definitely. saying he's a, a positive, positive he's probably one of the best you can get at 54 kilos to be fair okay all right that's my opinion yeah no fair enough um, race set. Oh, he's not aggressive, but Nick, he's passive. But in that price range from that barrier, I don't mind passive. Probably what you want. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to uh, race seven over a thousand meters. And um, oh, I found this super tricky. But I've got, I'll go to you first, Josh, because this seems like your cup of tea, mate. Oh, what have you found? No, it's, it gives me an icky feel on this race. It's it's it was quite tough to do. Um. In my black book, I do have Barclay Dreamer. Uh, those two Kenzo runs have been awesome, coming back to that midweek grade. And you're getting $14 to find out here. Wouldn't ben you like Thompson a little again. bit more, mate? Well, I, wouldn't you like a little yeah, bit more? Off obviously, I do, but yeah. we're getting double digits here. We're not. It's. I I think midweek can stand up to Saturday Metro there. Uh, maybe not in the sprinting ranks, because they actually sprinters are really good. And well, this we is 1,000 metres. We, I know, I know, yeah. but... Like what did we see last uh, last spring in uh, Melbourne? Brisbane sprinters, you know, on Colin James, yeah. this that. Um, I'm uh, back in a few of them on Friday Scalapini, night. So, yeah. um, oh, is there? Um, yeah. So I've settled on Mark or Jamie here. Um, again, a throw at the stumps bet comes from Sydney to Brisbane. That's my sort so of. So it's a, it's an auto black booker bet. That's correct. And I I, I know I've, a very a very big syndicate that just auto. Backs, backs a certain guys, really? black bookers and stuff like that. Yeah. Huh? They just auto do it. And they yeah. don't, they bet late as well. They just let the market sort out all the other shit and they just, and then they crunch. That, well, well, no, then they just suggest that the, the, the market equalizes every other factor except oh, for the right. really good video analyst. So they just bet late. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's profitable for them. Very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Nick, what do you got? Oh, I've also sorry. There's another horse I like. Yeah. Is, is maximum output as well. These are uh, Bailey Wheeler sticks. Um, oh, it was. I'm liking the horses it's been running against in the class six, and uh, two starts ago was wide and fought on very well. So again, another another double digit shot. Um, but it was a tricky race to do. 
Very tricky race. I can't say I'll be probably betting in this race. Well, I'm super interested in what Nick's found here because I know he's had a little bit of excess, success betting into some of the form lines here. So you should have a good idea here, Nick, about which is the best one. So tell us, yeah, please. Yeah. I'm reasonably confident, Gord, we're going to find the same horse here going on, uh, <clears throat> a horse with a bit of potential uh, on its way up. I've uh, I've already had a bet here on the six beast mode. Um, I liked its win, like the trainer. I think that Huxtable rides okay, drawn well. Um, it's got a bit of a tail on at this race. I've had a bet on it, and I will probably, I think, the two immoral is going to get to. I, I haven't bet yet on it because I think with the sixty kilos, it's going to get out, and we'll get a reasonable price late. But I, I, I didn't find a lot of chances in this race. I was sort of half hoping the three flaming conquest would be. Would, I hope they bloody scratch it because it's a pain in the ass that horse. But um, yeah, I, I'm pain of the horse. Why? Because it's a sporadic performer, or yeah, it it just it'll just belt forward and put pressure and just give itself none. And just, it's one of those horses. It's, it's just annoying, but. Um, well, if it, if it comes out, Beast Mode will be very hard to beat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but I look, I I think Beast Mode's really hard to beat. I like its win. I like its action as a galloper. Um, it's one thing I really look for is a, a horse's action. Um, and I think it's got a, a really good action. It lets down well, like its win. And Morals going really well. It was a bit stiff last time, and they're the two for me. Um, I think I can probably play both and make a profit. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? So, sorry, you you were just hoping there, Nick, or is there some suggestion that the three comes out? Because that no, is no, a but massive I think difference. It'll run. I think it'll run good. But, uh, uh, okay, because I, I mean that's of, a big difference on the map, man. Like, yeah, wow. I know, I, I know. I thought I'm, dude, this was like you know golden information. Yeah, yeah, the old yeah, golden yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. So I can take the two eighty B mode straight well, look, away. I know, look, I know where the stable is, so I can go and do a bit of work if you want. But, yeah. um, <laughs> No, look, I, I'm assuming it runs. It's only, it's not drawn too badly, but this, um, this thousand meters is an absolute horror start. Um, you're straight on the bend. We say it every week, and I reckon the last ten meetings we've done good. I've said I like this off the draw, or and then it gets a shit run. Um, yeah, well, that's so okay. as, long as, yeah. as long as Beast Mode jumps, um, I'm okay t- to be on it. No, I love a dominant win first up. The thing is, it's not completely franked yet, Nick. No. It's my only thing. But I love what you're saying. And then what we do is to find the line to say, okay, we well, only resumed in a Wednesday race. So where's the line that you're A grade? Or, or up to, you know, your real proper Saturday Metropolitan. And isn't it the line at Eagle Farm over a 1,000 metres? So what was the only horse that finished past it on that occasion? All that pizzazz. Yeah. I think that's looking pretty good. Down, yeah, it's, it's, the form yeah. line's pretty good. I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. And I love a mid prep trial as well. Would I have liked it to be more dominant against Warrior S and that feels better? Definitely. Mm-hmm. To, to, you know, get it as close, like get it even money, you know what I mean? To be super aggressive in pricing it. Yep. Um, saying that, uh, clearly on top number six for me, Beast Mode, I will be backing it. And the other one I'm going to back, which I cannot believe that Josh didn't mention, number one, easy single, mate. Now, we know oh, this. I, I, the... I, I backed that first up. I, I, as soon as I saw it, it went like that. I never again. Well, it went back to the wrong part of the track. Oh, and, you it know, was... it was really ungenerous coming out of barrier one on that occasion. And if it gets back to its peak figure, oh, it, it, it'll, yeah. it'll shit this in. Yeah, I know. I but know. Get, I got getting... the first time. I thought it went terrible. And I said, never again. Yeah, yeah, it did go terrible. Yeah. It did go terrible. But it's over 30 to one with a peak figure that would shit this in. Please don't make me have money on it. <laughs> get it out of it. You know what we say? <laughs> the we jar. Get it out, of the jar. out of the jar, mate. Like, oh. come on. I don't know how big your bet, but as if, as if there's not like 200 out of the jar, like to win 6,000, mate. Like, I can't do it. Okay. Uh, like I said, I actually loved that horse when it was in Sydney and that, uh, when Ma and Eustace, I think, trained it. Yeah. Oh, I was man. waiting for it. And then, look, I have a look at what it did. Like, first up, um, last preparation was, you know, it was Flemington straight racing. Like, that wasn't ideal. And yeah. it got beaten by three and a half lengths by Kalos, and I don't think it's a straight horse. We've got victories over the shorter courses in some really superior stuff. We've got options from four. We've got $31 to find out. Yet again, I, I shouldn't talk about long shots. Everybody knows I love favourites, but I mean, as if that's not a bad. 
This is not your go. You'll find a few. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not my go. It's not my comfy place, discard. No. He, he, yeah. he, but he, he just looked at number one and goes, oh, I know this horse. <laughs> it's, it's, that's oh, the yeah. oh, okay, yeah, that's what everybody says. I like to yeah. keep it nice and simple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do like to keep it simple. Uh, saying that, I'm definitely going to have a good result on beast mode, but how yeah. couldn't you throw, like, Jesus Christ, just throw a couple of hundred each way on an easy single. Like, it, you know, if it does nothing, who cares? You know? Um Anyway, anyway, I think we've narrowed it down. The other one I did look at, Nick, was a moral, which is yep. which is a chance. But I sort of wait for a bit more of a lead from you there. Mm. And um, Mark will dream up. I'll just call you a genius, Josh, if it wins. Because I um, can, I'll go with a B, and if you want an easy single over. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm giving you the value. I oh, know right? I'm getting the good <laughs> stuff. That's not normally your go. Yeah, uh, race eight, 1,600 metres. Um, Nick, what have you got? Let me catch up. Race eight. Uh, okay. Uh, the number nine here, Shibley, was good to us last time. We were, we were having a shitty day at Doomba, and then we found Shibley, which was good. And <laughs> yeah. was back on track. I, I, I always have a soft spot for a horse from having a shitty day that gets us back on track and mm. paraded well. Um I liked it. I liked its first up run, and then it came in the yard and looked, looked really well. Um, I think it's going well. Uh, in saying that, the two Hail Manhattan was really well back last start, and I thought it was, was shitty. Uh, Bullfinch runs well here in Brisbane, but geez, you go break back in Bullfinch, don't you? Um, Tidal Creek. Well, I've been a bit. And we've discussed this a few times, we've been a bit negative about the Kendrick Stable in Brisbane on the weekends, but yeah. certainly have to revisit that at the moment. Uh, they're low flying. Um, he's training really well. The horses are running well. And his combination with Wheeler is really good. So Doesn't the military gambler thing sort of line up as well? You know? Yeah, and, uh... it does. It does. I mean, military gambler loomed up to win that um, and, and just didn't get past it. Uh, I've got it down to eight and nine. Uh, I think I'll probably be able to play both when it comes around. It'll be interesting to see the parade, but um, yeah, I don't think it's not a race I'll be overly involved in. But I've got it down to the eight and nine. Well, I love that. That's not too bad. That's less than fifty percent there. Um, <laughs> Josh, just on the line of where you bet aggressively, mate. Sixteen hundred meters. What have yeah, you found? Exactly. Um... You know, these this race looks like the old Sydney race with Wallow. Whoever puts the senior jockey on, which is J Mac and Sydney, it just looks like it's its turn. Um, they all come out, most of them come out of that same Shibley race. Um, Bullfinch looks its turn, but how can you back it? It was its turn last time. time as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's this, yeah. It's like yeah. these all, all these horses are frustrating, you know, you, they just go round and round and round. Um, not my type of cup of tea race. I've found two at double digits again. Can't say I'm confident about them. One, number five, indispensable. Raced against Canadian Dancer last start. I don't mind Canadian Dancer as a horse. Yeah. Um, it was it's a been good. Ro- been good um, yeah. yeah, that's right. So it's rising distance was uh, 1,200 to 1,500. At this distance, stats, it's had nine starts around this distance range, I should say. It's had nine starts, three wins, five placings. So it obviously goes better around this distance range. And it's got inside game with CJ. So I'm hoping um, they have an easy time of it up in the first four. He is a bit of a bat, uh, bat, bat on kind of horse like Regal Pomp. So I'm hoping at double digits he's going to get a chance from barrier one. Um, and the other horse I'm going to back, I don't understand his preparation so far, is number seven, Stuttering. Um, at first up, I think it was over 1,200. He went back to 1,110 and it couldn't keep up with him. Um, so I'm assuming it's going to try lead here, but 11, uh, 11, 10 up to a mile is not really, um, super, but it's got Bailey Wheeler take. Oh, sorry. We've got, oh, Ben Thompson. Sorry. I've got Ben Thompson again. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I've got Ben Thompson off his Mark Duplessis. I'm not a big fan of him. Mm-hmm. And it's another lightweight chance of throwing the stumps. But again, this is, yeah, not my race. I won't be betting. Well, it's really interesting that seventh preparation, isn't it? Yeah, I don't understand what they've done there. But like last prep, it won over a mile. So, so what uh, do you mean? They went back, they ran it round over the 1100 meters, just like a glorified barrier troll, and it did a bloody good job. 
Yeah. Well, I couldn't. Get, he couldn't get to the lead. I didn't yeah, like how, what's how it super like from the yard because it's obviously uh, a middle distance horse. What are they doing there? Twelve hundred first up, eleven hundred second up. Like, yeah, a bit oh. strange. It actually has got some sort of rough hope. Um, it, it'll it'll parade okay. Um, Heathcote's horses look alright at the moment. Um, yeah, it's got a rough hope. And what was it? Was it Ben Thompson on Duplessis off? Yeah, I don't. Not a big. I'm not a big fan of uh, Dibble C. Obviously. Oh no, that's just... it's the Ben Thompson show for me today. I didn't realise. Well, <laughs> yeah, well yeah. there we go. There's jockey. Uh, there's the jockey challenge markets as well too, George. <laughs> that's, a, that's a significant jockey upgrade. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That just yeah. looks weird as all shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, strange. it's a It's a messy sort of race. But yeah. look, the obvious one to me is Shibley. It, it, it's done well. It's parading well, and see. Yeah. Well, you might guys might have convinced me to bet. I, I might just play around with seven, eight, and nine. You know, mm. um, that's just weird. That's just weird. Yeah, I don't weird. like weird. I don't like weird. I like ABC. We just watched the know. betting on the two. Hail Manhattan. It was paraded really well uh, last start and was really well supported. And I thought it went shit house. It ran fourth, but I thought it was really ordinary run. So, well, yeah. Nick, you know what? I love it when you put in lays. It's solidly are back again, and you don't like yeah, it. Gonna, just gonna let every, it, let let the let you you let your boys know to lay it. Right? So, it's going to be a bit more of that good. I've been thinking about that. I mean, more said these are the ones I like, but this is the one I'm really against. So yes, yeah, yeah. Um, well, everybody that's getting your stuff is um very fair, active, so um, it's more definitely more yeah. valuable to those kind of people. Yeah, for sure. Uh, race nine, 1,200 metres. And, oh, well, finally we get to an easy race. Uh, Josh, I'll go to you first. I don't know whether you think it's easy, easy, but I did. You know where you're going, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finally, it's a favourite Obviously, I, love, it, you know? I was doing the form for this meeting and I had 4,000 headaches. And I get to race nine and I'm thinking, you beauty. I only have to do form for two runners here. Yeah, exactly. And, that was what I did too. And you know what? I think Antina is unbeatable. I've gone oh, that way. Oh, really? I've gone that way. I I the love Carolina? the trial. I love the trial against Uncommon James there, um, and it showed intent to go forward too. So there's a lot of speed maps are going to have this back. I think from the low gate they're going to be more forward. I know Zarestra has that form with all that pizzazz is linked with um, winning that uh, the Westwood. But oh, I, I seriously reckon this is a serious horse, man. And like I said, the horses at first last prep, uh, like red card and stuff like that, I think that's superior to Zaresto stuff at the moment. Um, Bailey Wheeler claiming three, 55 kilos. They're gonna go, I think they're going to be positive. And like I said, trialling next to Uncommon James like that, I think one's 420, one's even. 420 for me, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, uh, you make sure that you stay online when I stop recording this meeting. Um, <laughs> Nick, what have you got? Well, I only had, I had three chances, Gord. Um, and the, it? Which is the third one? I think the top has got a rough hope to throw oh, at this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. First up, I, I'm going to make sure I don't lose if it wins. Uh, I think it's quite a talented horse, but Zarastro's. Zarastro has an amazing story. I think we've discussed it a couple of times. A million dollar yearling couldn't go any good. They bought it for 30 grand and it's just been flying up here. It has a fantastic action if you watch its races. It's just, it just really puts them down. Um, it's a beautiful style of horse. Uh, oh, it's hard to beat, but I'm a bit with Josh there. The trial of a Katarina was really good. Um, the only thing in my mind is that it was a month ago the trial and they've got they've got serious plans ahead for this horse and i mean we had a good result on it up here during the carnival i think it was its last run before it went to a spell yeah Which, tim clark was on yeah i think sort of declared it from yeah it, it pissed him um likes the tracks a good horse um hopefully when we sort of play around with the odds we can actually be on the four zarastro and the five Ekaterina and both get a good result and just probably save on the toppy for me um, I think it's a, a multi-bet race. But apart from them, if Lamelody wins, I'm jumping off the bridge because that, that horse has cost me a bloody fortune. Um, 
And when it won last time, I was eating paint for three days. So I, I cannot work that horse Nick, out. Nick, I just saw your wife come in with the luggage back. Yeah, so, she just turned up, mate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us the home shopping channel that we need to go to, all the randers. CBSN, mate. Channel 14 on your, your dial. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's it. And what are we selling? Jewelry or? Oh, anything, mate. Anything. <laughs> oh, fitness equipment, jewelry, makeup, whatever you want. <laughs> Yeah, Dolly no. Lamelli can't stop win shop. this race. It can't win this race. No, I With don't. The look... quality of Itina and um, Zaresta, no chance. I'm not convinced Lamelli runs 1200. I know it won last time, but I'm still not convinced. Barry Lockwood had it up here. It's been up here with him, and he can improve a horse. Trust me. But um, now I'm with four and five, and I'll be be saving on the one. But um, I don't see really any other chances away from there. Safe oh, yeah. work is one that maybe run into a place at around at any old price to number ten. Uh, I love doing this race because there was only one chance, and that's number four, Zarastro. I knew you'd be keen. Uh, like, like, seriously. Just... I thought it was a really good chance in the week would, when it didn't get a run. Last oh, yeah. Man, like, that is – talk about stamp, stamping form with all that pizzazz coming out and getting past yeah. yellow brick. I mean, it's so stamped. And then you guys are screaming about a Katarina off a trial. Have a look at its lines. Like, it gets owned when it's up against decent horses and it goes all right when it's up against weak horses. Uh, it's not in the same league as the Rastro. Now, I think that Josh has a psychological problem with this horse because he probably had some very big bets on it when it was running around in yeah. the good stuff in in uh, New South Wales and Melbourne. And to I be think, fair, I, I think you read my mind, man. you have. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. Because when I was with Waller, I thought it was a superstar. But still, yeah. it doesn't matter. I, I'm really confident here. I, I'll, you can have your billion back if you want. Oh, well, now we've evened it up as That's far as it. who gets <laughs> value. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, like it's it, it's paraded really well, this, and I was a little bit sort of half against it last time on the parade because I said, oh, it's just done a couple of things that I didn't really like. Yeah. Um, and then it still came out and... Shut just, in. Just so in. you're probably liking the four weeks. I, I don't think it's off, a the, off the yard and then four yeah, weeks for those little grosser marks. Did a couple of things I it hadn't done in the, its first couple of runs up here, um, and maybe I overanalyzed it a little bit. And when they're at that sort of price, you do look for any negative you can yeah. find. Yeah. Um, but what do you mean? Yeah. We get a positive jockey change. We get Angela Jones off for James Almond on. We get Matt positive from Barrier Three. Yeah, you get the local, and, and we get a B grader. Oh, Josh, we're doing some business tonight. Yeah, the six, the 16 could be a pain in the ass, never paid. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it could, could. But this thing's got a really high cruising speed. Um, I think I might be wrong here, but I think he's run like the fastest last 200 in his last couple of wins too. So he, he can sustain it. So, yeah, I, look, I think he's probably going to win a better race than this. Well, let's bring up those Let's bring up those late, late stuff. So... Oh, okay, yeah. You know, particularly the last race was just massive late. Massive late, yeah. But I rem remember when it got done, that first up run, Nick, where it was immoral, that was just ludicrous speed. So, uh, oh, that, you know, yeah, yeah, Malaya Castle yeah. took off on something at 700 to 1 and just destroyed the race and it got run over by the hatchet, I think it was. But, yeah, yeah that was, yeah, it still gives you cold shakes. But anyway. Uh, beauty. Uh, Josh, what are you, what, well, it sounds like, Anyway, you tell the viewers, uh, what are your best on the day? Give us a couple of morals and then a nice roughie for us. No, it's – no, that last race, race nine, it could, I can't even say. Ecarina? Ecatina? Ecarina. Arena. Ecarina. Ecarina. Yeah. I'm, think I'm Russian. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I, I'm pretty keen there, and hopefully I can get Gould's uh, billion in there. Uh, yeah. That's right. Um, I'm also going to give a tip for tomorrow. Maria, race four, Kenker. That's where I normally do my stuff. It's in a maiden down there. It's, I don't know what it is. I think it's about 240 or something. It should get the job down there in the country boosted. Uh, big shout out to Dan. He's doing a lot of work for the chat room. Uh, he's killing he's it. And awesome. everyone, everyone out in that chat room, good on him. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then pretty much my other Dubin plays. Um, I think Ocean of Energy can run a race in race three. Oh, uh, me and Nick obviously agreed on that. And, um, and obviously race four. I've obviously got those three horses. I will probably play Call Encounter because he's 26 to 1, but obviously Regal Pom, number one, number two, Aton the Delight, and something on that uh, Call Encounter. Oh, beautiful. Nick, what are your best? Well, good. I was sort of half expecting to not have much confidence after last week. I'm sort of, it's my 
English heritage negative mindset. That oh you know, yeah, <laughs> okay. You have you a good week. You're gonna have yeah, a yeah, shit yeah. week the next week. Yeah. So. <laughs> I actually quite like the meeting. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the it's the Protestant mentality, mate. Oh, Even if you're mate. not religious, it's ingrained in you. It's amazing. Yeah. That's right. I'll, I'll go back to Jersey flag when Sooty comes back. Anyway. <laughs> my late grandfather and father looking down on me go you can't win two weeks in a row son <laughs> and so, you know what but you know what my attitude is bet yeah, up because you're yeah, in know, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. you know momentum's a wonderful thing but look yeah. i like quite a few good uh race four i've already bet and quite keen on mission of love uh race five um i'm gonna i've ha had a bet on dramatica but i'm going to be one by three um, yep. quite keen there at decent price. Race six, uh, Cocken, oh, what's it called now? I've, I've lost its name, Kokonoski or whatever it was. Um, apologies, everyone. Kokonotsu, uh, and Tenzing, I think that's a two bet play. Um, there, race seven, I'm keen on beast mode, and in race nine, I think it's Sarastro with Katarina, and hopefully, we can back them both to. To make a profit, so I think it's a, it's a pretty good punting day. Looking at it, yeah, and on Eagle Farms playing really well at the moment, so that's good. Nice and fair. Find the best horses, and the best horse is the map positive horse in the last race, number four Zoratro. It's an absolute moral; it can't lose, and um, I will be betting accordingly. Um, thanks, Josh, for coming on, mate, and uh, you did an awesome job. And Nick, as usual, and um, let's uh, back a few winners tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Giddy up. Cheers. Thank you.